At the end of setting up a dynamic mesh problem part 1, I had just finished defining all of the local dynamic mesh settings for the six dynamic mesh zones. Now I will go into the global settings to ensure that I have the correct smoothing, layering, and remeshing settings specified. I want to use the diffusion method for smoothing. The diffusion parameter determines if the smoothing will be uniform throughout the zone, or if the motion should be absorbed far away or close to the wall. A setting of 2 will preserve the cells close to the moving valve, and the cells far away from the moving valve will absorb the motion. If I specify 0, the smoothing will be uniform throughout the zone. I will use a diffusion parameter of 1. For layering, I will retain the default values, which say that cells will be collapsed when they are compressed to 20% of their initial length, and split when they are stretched to 40% of their initial length. For the remeshing, I want the same values that I defined locally. For this case, I don't actually need to define remeshing parameters both locally and globally, but it is necessary in some more complex cases, so it is always a good practice to define both. Note that I am using the local cell remeshing technique, which marks interior cells in each remeshing zone, and cells that exceed either the specified skewness or the size criteria are remeshed. I have also set the size remeshing interval to 1 so that cells are marked for remeshing every time step based on the size criteria that I specified. For the 6 off solver, I will not include gravitational acceleration because I already defined this in the 6 off UDF. A final thing that I want to do is to specify some post-processing before I begin my simulation, and this is always a good practice when running a moving deforming mesh simulation like this one. I want Fluent to print pictures of the mesh and velocity profiles every time step, and I have written a simple script for that called post.jou. I will call this script with the command file read journal. Here is a quick look at this file. The script prints out two different pictures, one of the surface mesh and one of the velocity profile. Another good practice is to set up a surface monitor for the pressure on the valve. This allows you to see if the solution is achieving acceptable convergence. Now I am ready to run the simulation. I will have it run for 250 time steps with a maximum of 30 iterations per time step. And calculate. I have split the graphics window into four smaller windows so that I can visually monitor the progress of the solution while Fluent is calculating. The upper left view shows the residuals. Below that is the surface monitor for the pressure on the valve. Now that Fluent has calculated the first couple time steps, you can see that the mesh and velocity profile images are printing as they should. I'll skip ahead a few time steps so that you can see the velocity profiles beginning to develop. I will end this tutorial with another quick view of the final resulting mesh deformation and velocity profiles. This concludes the basic steps you need to follow in order to properly define a moving and deforming mesh problem. Thank you for watching.